Right, welcome to episode 10. Have a go with Corey Vlachiki. I got Isaac John here. Well, I'm at his joint, YKTR. Uh, where are we? Alex- Alexandria? Yeah, Alexandria. So we met Ice fuck, was it through footy or Justo, maybe? Oh, a little bit of both. I remember seeing you knock about with Penrith in a little bit. Yeah. And then um, I think the first time I proper shook your hand and had a chat with you when we were over in America that time. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, right. so, um, yeah, so <laughs> predominantly through Justin. So, yeah. yeah. So I did a bit of a Google research on you, mate. Did you? Find <laughs> much? Kiwi, Kiwi Gary V? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I've been getting called. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, everything I've done within business is built off the philosophies of what Gary V have taught in terms of documenting um, journey. And um, I'm pretty much saying the same shit he does, but just in a different tone. So it's chuck work. It, it's working. Chuck your own little twist on it. Yeah, I think it's the best way to like, because a lot of people can't resonate with Gary Vee. He's like, I want to buy the New York Jets. A lot of people don't even know who the New York Jets are. So um, um, I feel like my strength in communication with podcasting and business has been able to break down business concepts into um, terminology that other people can understand. So yeah, it's been important. So you CEO, YKTR? Yeah, CEO. Oh, very loose, that like CEO, but um, co-founder, obviously with Chico and Corey. Um, our story's pretty much out there. A lot of people do know it, but we're kind of just three guys that kind of enjoyed footy and playing and partying and that sort of lifestyle and sort of do. Are that a swear on it? Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> uh, due, due to due to just having a few beers and fucking around with all the boys, we just go fuck. Let's just start a clothing brand, and um, obviously, I had a lot more interest in it than the boys. But then they're sort of, um, if you do know them personally, like they're just go getters. They're like, I could say something, or we could say something. And they're just like, fuck it, let's go get it. So um, a lot of the work has been done on me, but I'd, I'd rather it that way. A lot of people ask like. What do the boys do? But they own the business. They own the, but they don't, I don't need them to do anything. I just want them to be my friend and, and, um, supportive business partner. And it hasn't always been smooth sailing, but, um, they've been good. I feel like if you had three friends and you went and in, equally invested, I don't reckon we would have, like, one, the business would have worked or two, the business might have worked and we might not have been friends. So the way it's panned out, it's been, uh, pretty good. So I, I've, I've enjoyed it. How was that convo at the start? Was it like that from the start? Like, I'm going to be doing this, you just take it back with C? Or um, how'd that work out? Yeah, no, it's, to be fair, like, it's only in the past maybe six to six months where it's, like, very clear in the, in the sand where we go. And I've talked about this publicly before. Like, we had to go and, like, get someone externally to come in to negotiate our contracts. And when we went to go negotiate the equity share in it, uh, I was like, oh, like, I want a little bit more. And uh, me and Chico didn't really see eye to eye. Uh, Corey was sweet. I always thought it would be the other way around. I thought I always have a backlash of Corey because he's quiet. Like he's like he, he complains about everything, and <laughs> but it was, it was more so me and me and Chico that were sort of blown up about um, different things. And all I wanted was three um, percent more off the each of them. So I would get forty, they'll get thirty, thirty. It was meant to be thirty three, thirty three because we all put in equal amount of money. So we started YKTR with five thousand bucks each. So fifteen thousand dollars got us and and. In theory, like that 33% should have been negotiated right then, but I put in like a year and a half's work. I've done everything. I've done all the designs, website. I packed out everything myself. I found all the suppliers, all that sort of stuff as well. And it wasn't even so much about a power thing. I just kind of wanted them to just give me like a pat on the back. And three, I felt like 3% was reasonable. And I was, I was weird because I hadn't really talked about this and I had this little built up frustration about it. And so when I went into the meeting, like we were talking sweet before that, but when we went into the meeting, like me and Chico were like, like clashing. So... Um, but then once it was all sort of explained, um, Chico was like, oh, fuck, you know, you actually deserve that. So, yeah, no, it's been good. Like, Corey's been cruisy. I know what Corey wants. Corey just wants to say in designs, and then if it takes off, like, is there a job here for him or something like that? Where Chico, Chico's got a bit of a business mind. He wants to do a lot of different things. Um, he enjoys that hospitality space of cafes and stuff like that. So um, Chico just wants, wants to know what's going on within the business and stuff like that. So very – very similar blokes off the like off the field and, and the way they sort of carry themselves, but in terms of business, they very two different um, aspirations. Like Corey's happy to be a stick in the river and just go off the flow, and and he'll have a say here and there. And then um, Chico's got like he wants to build stuff as well, so he'll come in, ask different types of questions that Corey's going to ask, and then he'll go out and do his stuff as well. So it's it's a great dynamic. It's worked. Um, our friendship hasn't suffered in any way, shape, or form. Um, our equity shares there, like I've signed the contracts. If we if we sold for fifty million dollars in three years' time, like they'd get the thirty percent, and I'd be happy with that. Like I've just made my friends like millionaires. That's how I feel. Where I've had people come to me, go, "Are you gonna try and buy them out?" Or I was like, "Nah, like I'll go build some other stuff." So, 
Um, yeah, it's been cool. It's been cool, bro. Have you have you always had that sort of business entrepreneurial type mindset? Uh, I think so. I think so. So we we had a class in high school called the Young Enterprise Scheme, and you had to set up a business and um, like do like go get product and stuff like that. And it was pretty cool. And I always found that interesting. I took economics in high school as well, so I learned like basic supply and demand. But more so off the back of like reading. Um, I got injured while playing football, and reading was sort of my outlet. And the guy named Michael Lark, guy named Michael Lark, who um, played football with, he introduced me to reading. So. Started reading about like sports uh, biographies and just like kind of got bored and then went self development, self help, and then started reading about business books. And by the time I was ready to finish football, I had about a hundred books underneath my belt. So right. yeah, so um, and I found myself within football getting bored of the conversations I was having, like, like oh, like chasing, like chasing <laughs> girls, gambling, but when's our next bender? And, like I was into that stuff, you know what I mean? Like I was a fan of that shit, but just like every week like it's just like oh and then I'll try and talk about something else and it's just like nah shut up shut up shut up so um yeah I just I felt something pulling me towards uh business but the it was probably more so fair like I was fair of like working for someone else like that fucking like would keep me up at night like when I think about it now still like it makes my stomach drop like the rocking up to someone else's workplace and and especially off the back of COVID like anyone could be fucked off if you're working for someone else and even if you're building your own shit like it could crumble but I'd rather have that. Like I'd rather try and build something and die my own sword, and then sort of walk up to a job and go, "Hey, bro, you're not you're not needed here anymore." But you're like dying on your own sword. I don't think it's that scary once you realise, you know, you take a couple punches or whatever, or you know, a couple knocks. It's not as scary as people think. No, nah, no, nah. and like um, I always always ask people like, "What's the biggest fear about starting a business?" And it's always like losing money or failing. And I'm, well, well, the way I see failure is. People are only scared of failing because they're scared of what other people think of them. So if I tripped up, landed on my face, um, and no one was around me, like I'll just get up and carry on. Where if I'd done the exact same event, if I was walking down the, in the forest, tripped up, landed on my face, but there was a hundred girls around, all of a sudden <laughs> that exact same event seems so much different. And that's how people treat business. They're actually scared. But the strategy I've worked out and is very much Gary V is like document everything. So whenever I fuck up, like I'll put a video up straight away. Hey guys, like I fucked up. Like we've done this mystery box thing a couple. Uh, oh yeah, I remember that. I fucked yeah, it up big yeah. time, bro. Like cost us like 20,000 bucks. Like it's $20,000 fuck up. And um, I was just going like, Hey guys, I just <laughs> and like I was panicking not not because, not because of the money like, I didn't care about the money, but I was more so panicking because like I let I let my customer base down and um, they were very understanding and like I, I said apology from me, I had apology from Natasha go out from as well. I put out a video one as well, so I tried to cover all my bases off straight away. And I knew fucked up like someone got an order and I seen it. I was like, oh, that's way off. So what we'd promised and what we delivered was nowhere near. It was about one hundred and fifty dollars off. So I uh, just went through that process, but it was good. Like. Like, you know, you, you learn from that shit, bro. Yeah. Do you, th- do you think you get that from playing footy? Like that accountability and ownership? Like, uh, yeah, but uh, like- Was that just something that you've had before that? I remember Sean Berrigan once told me like the best thing to have in football is a short-term memory. So like if, you, if you're moping, you're moping about and you're dragging your lip around on Wednesday, it sort of fucks up your game the next day yeah. or next weekend as well. So I think that helps. I think being in the football environment helps. Like getting your piss taken out of you like every single day. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I seen you I heard you're about to put up a sausage dog. <laughs> um, so like I, I got a bit of a long tour, so, so every day I was like sausage dog, sausage dog. Like and, and then you've got your coaches that'll critique you in front of a lot of people in, in a video session, and then you've got fans that'll critique you as well. Then you've got the media, and then fucking last thing you have to go home and look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, Did I do like everything I could have today? Or from Monday to Friday, did I prepare the best I could to perform and there's a lot of correlations that trans over from sports to business and um yeah i'm glad i'm glad i had that football background um getting over stuff pretty quickly short wins not not dwelling on your losses and not getting too carried away if your wins as well so i feel like i'm in that right little balance at the moment content king you are get it get enough of it out there you're, gu- you're a gun at it so yeah. well with that well i run what people that are listening already know, I run a uh, a gym, and I think we sort of started when you were starting out of your home office or yeah, bedroom. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. We and had you, a meeting at Henry Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. And you were doing vlogs, and that gave us the idea to like, fuck, because every gym has got the same video. Oh, look how mad our workout is and mm. our facility. So we approached it a bit differently because you were like the little light bulb for us. Like, fuck, they're just documenting. It's like reality TV's like number one shows all the time. People want to watch that shit like behind the scenes and that's what you do really well. Mm. Is that again another Gary V strategy that yeah. you – 
Yeah, very similar to you guys. So you guys are in a saturated industry with the gym. We're like, we're clothing. Like we've had well over a hundred people start clothing brands off the back of like our vlogs and inspired by us and plenty of that copied us and would never say it as well so um, when you're in a saturated industry you're not really going to change the product like you might think your workouts are a lot better than everyone else's but essentially they're the same like three times like bench press like it's not revolutionary do you know what I mean but the way you can actually change your business is how you make people feel about your business and you do that through your marketing and you do that through your storytelling and um, like you, you've caught on to it now like what's your point of difference your point of difference is your personality at the top like like People were like, you're in the fashion game. I was like, I didn't like fashion. I didn't even really like clothes, but th- th- I use these as a vehicle to do a lot of things that I actually wanted to do. First thing I used them for was to not work for anyone. Second one was to do things I actually wanted to do, travel, create, um, run a business. Now third is like, fucking, I can use these clothes to actually inspire people. So um, that that analogy of it changed, but it come off the back of documenting my journey. And I used to think I was good at vlogging like really early. You know, I'm good, yeah. man. I like them. But I, I look back at them now, I'm like, fuck, that is so <laughs> shit. Like, can't even fucking talk, always saying, ah, oh, um, like all that sort of type of stuff as well. So uh, the worst case scenario, um, you can look back, like even if you don't have massive success or, or like even if you do have massive success. I remember my dad used to always tell me about like when he played football, how good he was and like, just, like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, like you're getting like that in your mind. Like, it didn't happen. But the worst thing that can happen of me documenting my journey, if I do become a success, which I think I am going to be, um, and I have kids, I'm like, shh. YKTI episode one, like, <laughs> shit, baby, go back there. <laughs> and and that, like, that's the worst thing you can do. But, um, like, like I said, like, we're, I'm in a saturated industry right now. Like, we, I talk to people, um, like successful people within this industry. And I'm like, how much did you have to start this business off? And a lot of them get, um, private equity firms who invest, like, some of the bigger dogs. And they all say about 500K. So we've been able to build a business, uh, pretty successful business. It's a seven figure business pretty quickly, pretty early off the back of 15,000 bucks. And a lot of it's just been grinding and all that sort of stuff as well. So, um, yeah, it's something I'm really, really proud of. Do you think no matter what business you would have went into, like fashion or, you know, say you went into, some other type of business do you still think you would have been successful no oh, i don't know i don't know um like i tried a few different things i tried drop shipping i was very like um what's the quickest way i can get money so yeah. i can travel I, like, I went down that avenue so i used to drop ship you get a giggle out of this like um <laughs> like dog t-shirts yeah for so, actual dogs or yeah, with dogs nah on nah for like their owners and shit oh, yeah. so i i was on the instagram i was on instagram and all i used to see was like eastern suburbs chicks walking around with their dogs and stuff and i was like fuck why don't i just make start making like dog t-shirts like just random shit bro so went on um like fiverr which is like a freelance um and just got random designs and started putting them on t-shirts so what print on demand means like it's not like ykta where we have a bunch of inventory and if you buy it um, we can send it to you the next day it's like if you buy it then we'll then we'll make it so you're not losing your money off straight off the back so and i just learned how to facebook advertise off the back of that and my biggest demographic was actually texas like old oh, yeah. ladies between 40 and 50 years old were buying <laughs> fucking like dog t-shirts so about the thing i learned about that was like uh, facebook ads was the obvious one but like setting up like a page but the thing was like i felt slimy like i, I was using like an alias um there's a thing called brand tone when you when messages. So like YKTR's brand tone, like, oh, that's doozy. Like we use the terminology of how we actually speak. And I figured this out pretty early. Like if I spoke like a girl, um, like in a female tone, like the, my conversion rate was a lot higher. And these are all like things you learn in marketing and stuff like that. But I was just learning it like on the go. But like I said, like I felt slimy, like um, I was using aliases for emails to reply to people. It just didn't sit right with me. So I sort of fucked that off, even though I was making like 150 bucks, 200 bucks a day on it. I was just going, nah, the same net because then you learn about like cost of goods and, and marketing and then like that 200 a day sounds good, but then what we really make is like 30 bucks. And so um, I don't like, I failed at that. I wanted to start a social media agency as well. Failed at that, but I'm starting that now as a digital agency. Was that prior to YKTR? Same time, same, same time. time. So I was trying to do multiple different things because I wasn't getting paid from YKTR. So I was trying to do these other things and just testing it out. Um, but the key part, key part, I was in about my 10th meeting for a social media agency and I was, I was offering to go charge a business like a thousand bucks and I run all your ads for you and fucking like dirt cheap now when I think about it. But, um, they all said no. And these are all people I knew. And, um, the reason why I was like, fuck it. Like I haven't done anything. 
like I can't point back at something and go, oh, like this is what I, I was just going, yeah, I was promising the world. I was like, I know how to run Facebook ads. Like, this is what I've done with why I can do this for you guys as well. And it wasn't until I had that sort of 10th media walk down and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm kind of full of shit here. I'm like, I'm saying stuff I haven't really done. Um, let me just, instead of me focusing on fucking dog t-shirts and, and social media agency and a bit of YKTR on the side, let, let me just go all in on YKTR because this is where it's at. You're pretty like creative as well. Like you said, I oh, was just light bulb moment. Where's that come from? Like, uh, where, how do you get in a creative space? Probably growing up in a small town, probably growing up at the time that we grew up. It's like fucking go outside and don't come inside to your, to the lights. Like street yeah. lights come on, bro. You know what I mean? And like, I wasn't allowed to play PlayStation, not, um, except for like Friday nights or, or Saturday night. That was the only time I was allowed to play, play PlayStation. Plus I had an older brother who wouldn't let me play with him all the time. You know what I mean? Like, you just, just a proper younger brother thing. So let's just go outside, play. Um, very small town to grow up in, 10,000 people. Um, even like like footy-wise, we were quite creative footy-wise. Or footy wise. Like uh, Joseph Manu playing, he's from my hometown. He's got a bit of skill about him. Quay Cooper's another one. I think it's just growing up in a small town and having not too much to do, but then have parents that's, that are trying to keep you out of trouble as well. So um, do you put that all that creativity within sport or do you start thinking about other things as well? So... Just an accumulation of a lot of different things as well. Um, I picked up a camera, 2012, like Kaylin and that. Um, they, they get praised for all this sort of stuff. I had a fucking camera in 2012 <laughs> and I was getting fucking paid out from all the body. I fucking got a camera for. Um, so I really enjoyed taking photos. Just used to go on Tumblr, like enjoyed looking at photos and I was sort of traveling at the time. Um, so I was like, oh, I just want to take cool photos. So got into photos that transferred into videography. Then I wanted to be a photographer slash videographer, freelancer, so I could travel the world and do all that sort of stuff. And then, um, yeah, just tried a bunch of different things and then sort of landed here. What about now? Like, do you feel like you're always, you know, when you run a business, it's 24 seven, like you're always on, on, on. How do you get into a creative space now? Uh, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard Cause like I put out a vlog two days ago and I can chop a vlog up pretty quick now. It used to take me about seven hours, eight hours. Cause I used to care. Um, <laughs> Don't but, care no nah, more. No, <laughs> no. Nah, like I do, I do like, and it's been an important part of our business, but like you said, it's like time, like how much, like I'm on part of like four businesses right now. So um, it's just trying to, allocate that time to it as well. So I'm, I spent three hours this morning making a vlog, um, the one I shot with uh, Hoz and, and that this morning, or oh, yesterday. So, But I spent three hours on it and it's so much better than any of the other vlogs I've done in the past like couple of weeks because I'll just go, oh, fuck, let me just put it out there. So um, allocating time for it, is it is it d- depends how you function like i'm not i don't like compartmentalizing my life i don't like sort of breaking everything up and like from this time you need to be doing this this time you need to be doing that i'm quite in the flow but then if there's something creatively i'm, I'm more than happy to block out the morning because i can make up that work later so yeah it is it is sort of time blocking but i don't really work well that way as well so yeah. i don't know so understanding who you are and for me i just go if i'm in the mood i'll just go and sometimes it's very early in the morning like I could start making a vlog at six and be done by nine and I'm happy or sometimes it's very late at night. So, And then your education as well, man. Like I've heard you talk about, you know, you drop a bomb on education, online courses. Like you've gone to Curran Way I've seen as well. Yeah. Back in the day. Um, what's your thoughts on like that space? Like for someone that's, you know, thinking of going to uni or spending four years there or whatever, what's your thoughts on, like, our education system? Like, uh, what's uh, your best advice? Um, Just depends who you are because, obviously, if you're going to be a doctor or if you're going to be an engineer, there's that element of uni that you have to go to. So, But if you want to start a business, I don't think it's super important. Um, I feel like I could teach, you could, like, so I've been in, YKTR has been around for, like, three and a half years now, so that's kind of like a business degree. So I feel like I've learned more. I've probably made a fuckload more money than, than a uni student would have made right now. I've built, a, like, a seven-figure business, and I've learned in my lessons by actually doing it so there's two ways that you can actually do it um i find like if i had a pool right now and go this pool is going to make you 10 times smarter i don't think anyone would say no to that but what they find with education and trying to find smarter is they just haven't got the right teacher like i had good teachers when i like i can remember my three favorite teachers and they made learning fun for me so um i feel like online education is the way forward there's always that little stigma around it like i said like i've just dropped an online course and uh, blueprint. Got, the blueprints going well it's going really really well it's easy like great business model because there's no cost of goods sold like you make your thing and it's evergreen so like i'm selling like a thousand dollar course if i sell a hundred of them that's a hundred thousand dollars so um but then people realize that and then they'll people will make a course without actually ever, ever building anything. And I've taken those courses and they've still been pretty good. Um, but like 
I, I feel like the difference between mine is, is I've actually built something I can point back and go, fuck, I built like ATR and this is what I've done. Where I think online education space is going to be very big soon. What What is the blueprint? Give us a little rundown. Uh, so the blueprint is just sort of like, I spend about fifteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars on my brain every year. I take courses. I, t- I read books. Um, I I get my data right up so I can fucking listen to podcasts and shit all the time. Um, yeah, like I said, like the Kerr and Ray, I've done nail it and scale it, which is like a three day course. But I've kind of just picked all these different things from these all these fucking online courses that I've done and just bundle bundle them up into what I think. Um, help YKTR grow because a lot of people look at me and go oh if you didn't have Chico Normie like you wouldn't be here and I'm like yeah like take this course how many times have you heard that oh it's coming less and less and like and like people go you can't deny that but I was like yeah but these are just my these are just my friends like they're going to be my friends after like they've finished football like who cares about their but it feels really based off the back of that like Chico isn't playing anymore he's suspended like Corey's like been in the losing side for the last two years two three years essentially like our business it feels in correlation with football players we'd be going down like that but we just keep going up and up and up so um, it did help at the start but then like these times we'll be measured like codes so I'll give you a code like Corey like 20, you get 20% discount code. And when you track it back to data, like sometimes they'll get no sales. Sometimes they get two sales. Like sometimes mine will get like 20. So, um, but like I said, the blueprint sort of covers a bunch of different things. Branding's a big important one. People forget about branding, social media. I don't think people do social media right. They treat it as a catalog. They're always trying to get the sale. Um, they're not trying to build brand experience. They're not trying to uh, um, humanize their brand in any way, shape, or form. Facebook advertising, which is pretty much the best skill set you can have right now to scale a business. Uh, email marketing. People forget about email marketing because it's an old school one. But if you want to scale and scale to a seven-figure business, you need to have great email templates and, and, and flows and automate them. So when someone buys something off us, a flow goes on, like, hey, thanks for purchasing off YKTR. If they buy a second time, another one goes on. Like, I can't sit there and type that email out every single time. Um, so that's a great way to scale quickly because it gives a brand experience without you wasting all your time. Not wasting, but using all your time in that sort of realm. Uh, mindset, goal setting, that pretty much covers it. But I'm going to keep adding um, – videos into that exclusively for that so i'll give away 98 percent of my content for free but those people that are actually willing to spend a thousand bucks on me like i've given a fuckload away for free like what do you think i'm going to do for people that actually spend money on my brain so um i'm going to put some videos together for those guys as well probably the next one i was going to do like how much money do you actually need to retire like there's a, look this up it's like called the four percent rule so whatever you want to live off in a year so it's a hundred thousand dollars you times that by 25 and then if you put that into an sp 500 which is an index fund over the shares and you live off four percent which annually returns eight to ten percent eight to ten percent over the last 75 years you can live off that 100k so like you know what i mean it's not that much money like two and a half million sounds like a lot of money if you if you're an employee but that's because you're going to get taxed at the higher, highest rate. So that's why I'm invested into building businesses. So I build businesses. I've never done this at the start, but the businesses I'm going to after YKTR are there to either sell or get equity in so I get multiple streams of revenue so I can hit that target. So like you, what you touched on there, you don't really have to reinvent the wheel to be successful. It's just like you sort of pick your points from each thing and then – make it sort of relate to you or your business and then go from there. Like a lot of people got this misconception, I've got to fucking reinvent the wheel to be successful. Mm. No, 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 no. And like you, and when you say, I know what you're saying, but or, yeah, you're actually you're spot on because you don't reinvent the wheel, but you just take the core principles. You've got to understand, like you've got to understand operations, you've got to understand finance, you've got to understand marketing and stuff like that. But then you put your own twist on it, like how you sort of talked of. And the best way you can do it is just documenting your journey. Like the reason I can pump out a fuckload of content so many, like our goal is to pump out six pieces of content on YKTR Sports on, on YKTR minimum a day. So the way we can do that is purely just by documenting and people get caught up on trying to put out like the perfect photo and make sure the lighting's right and make sure this caption's right. Like I spell shit wrong all the time. But <laughs> like, save just, me, bro. Save but, me. And it's not because I can't spell, it's just because I'm fucking moving so quick. <laughs> no, I can't spell. <laughs> that whiskey coming out on you, bro. Hey, you live there, bro, for uh, a little bit, eh? Not by choice. <laughs> Shout out to the West. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like it's just too, like the way people move is just too slow. And like 
One of the things I talk about in this online course is you need 20 touch points before someone would consider buying off you. Back in 2011, it was like eight. Yeah. yeah. So like people have to see it like 20 times before they go, oh shit, what is YKTR? Which will become like a warm audience or warm customer. So they consider buying off you. So um, if I'm putting out six to 12 pieces of content a day, I'm probably going to probably get a better chance of winning than you are because you're putting out one a week. And that's just as simple as that. It's, it's just a numbers game, hey? Yeah. Got YKTR Sports now. What's the go with that? Like, why? I, to be, I love that, man, what yous are doing in that space. Cool. I reckon yous will take over media, like the next generation coming through. Like, you bloke in the bar is really cool as well. Mm. Like, um, just come off the back of a pain point. Like, we've been around in Australia and we're just so consumed by just normal media. It's not a great business. Like, it's been around for almost a year now, hasn't made a single dollar. And it's not even about Scope, that. bro. Scope too much. Are you paying him too much or what? <laughs> uh, scope's all right. But, yeah, no, nah, it's like – it's. It's just built off the back of a pain point. Like I love American sports, and like basketball is like my, probably my favorite sport right now. Like I love it more than league, but like I'll never sit there and watch a full game of basketball because I like everything around it. Like what Lebr- what's LeBron wearing to the game? Like what's what like what's his kid up to? Like his young fella Bronny. Like is he going to be a gun? Like what is what does LeBron eat before like a big game or final series? And that was the type of things I was interested in. See, like media right now, and like Bloke in the Bar's done a great job of breaking down, but they're essentially still reporting on what's happening. They'll report on score lines, they'll report on stats. Like Tom Lolly ran for 300. Like, that's cool. Like, but I want to build content around Monday to Friday. Like, the same way we built YKTR, like Corey had this negative perception about them. Chico had this negative perception about of who they actually were, like spoiled, entitled, like party boys. And there was an element of truth to some of those things. But like once we started vlogging, it sort of broke down that wall. And normally we almost got like um, the community service ward last year, got pipped by C.S. Oliola. But he had the highest, he had the highest um, votes community like from, from the public. Oh, yeah? And essentially, I just wanted to do that. And I was sitting on the plane one time. Um, I was sitting on a bunch of podcasts, bagging media, like, oh, Paul Kent, blah, 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 Buzz <laughs> Rothfield, blah, blah, blah. But I sort of listened to myself back one time. And I don't listen normally listen to my content back. And I was going, fuck, like, shut the fuck up. Like, bro, if you're not going to do anything, like, what the fuck's the point of talking about it on the podcast? Like, why don't you actually try to build something? So I uh, hired a guy named Lukey straight away. Um, he's great at graphic design and all that sort of stuff as well. And then we just started nutting out all these ideas. And our main source of inspiration is like Complex over in America. Um, Barstool Sports, I yeah. think I think we – They're pretty funny. There's heaps of them too, eh? They've got heaps. like one. They've got a great story. Like they sold for like 500 million, like 30 per six. That, that Dave Portnay, um, still president, fuck, they're very smart – so they started like 17 years ago, very like Batuta Advocate style, like just write like sort of fuck around <laughs> stories. And it sort of just grew from there. So um, that's what I want to build with YKTR Sports. Um, I just didn't want to be like, I don't think you're going to ever replace media because it's too, it's funded too like, heavily. And um, there's a place for it. Like people want to know the news. People want to know what's going on. But the, the I think you can change the perception though Like guys like It's you, an option We'll give yeah. them an option Yeah give them an option yeah. So like one of our things Is player to fan Fan to player So we, we won't report on gossip So if something happens And, and someone's going to change clubs we, like, we won't talk about that But if that player wants to come on And have a chat And feel like he's been um, Misrepresented in a, in a different way Through the media Come and have a chat with us And like we'll get your story out there um, We're not We're not trying to like Skip bad news Or anything like that We're just trying to Um let the players tell it on their own terms, but then also create a fuckload of media around it that you can't get at Fox Sports, that you can't get at Channel 9 because they have to answer to a board of directors. Like, Scope has to answer to me and I'll just go, yeah, fucking go, go. So so the strategy is to build YKTR Sports as your sports umbrella and essentially have personalities that come underneath it. So Scope's probably our like most recognisable one right now first um, and then try and get a bunch of different funny people that are just fucking knockabouts. It's just type of content that I want to watch. Like I want to see someone outside the front of a stadium talking shit to random people that doesn't have to worry about swearing. Like, cause I fucking swear all the time and people pull me up on it, but there's still a fuckload of people that want to watch my content. So it's not about trying to change the narrative fully, but it's just trying to give people an option through different types of content, through, um, written, through, through podcasts, voice, and then through video. So we planned on making a lot more videos before, um, but we just can't get access to football players at the moment because all the rules and shit. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Yeah. I, I, I love what you are doing, like, especially. I know you said like there you're gonna have videos of, like watching someone on their game day. What that I used yeah. to love watching that as a kid. Like I remember they followed Freddie Fittler around once, mm. training and then game day. 
Like I, that that stuff is like that behind the scenes what you're talking about, and fans really appreciate that stuff. Like even I know the Penrith boys, like uh, uh, Nathan Cleary, uh, there was a couple of. Uh, I was a yo on that walking in, yeah, kid cool. it up. That, oh, that was funny. Yeah, and so then they cop the biggest roasting over that. Yeah, see, I hate that shit. See, or like when someone's got a shit haircut, they're like, "Oh, he's not switched on." Or <laughs> yeah, like, Corey what gets is, that all the time. What's like, that people, even mean? Like, yeah, it's annoying. It's annoying, and, and it's just more so. Like, I done one like last week about wages, like play the wages, like hun- like forty five percent of the NRL are under one hundred and fifty, and it's still like. Still okay, or like money, but for what they have to do, go through all that sort of stuff, and not everyone can actually get to that point. Really broke down that wall. The next one I'm going to go after is like when a when a player signs a three year contract, but then the club doesn't want them after their yeah. second year. Like that's fucking like no one no one has talked about that shit. Yeah, so I'll be talking four, about yeah. I'll be talking about that because I've seen plenty of my mates get fucked over. So um, like that's 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 what I want to break down because right now there's this massive media war that distributes out the content and they distribute out in the way that's going to get um, money. So the more negative stories that they write, they get more open rates and more they can charge people. So I want to, I'm still want to charge people. Um, won't be a paid media war in front of it, but I want to pay charge sponsors to get it with our, um, with our content. Cause that's the business model of media. You have to get like, we got, we got clothing and all that stuff and scope's going to get all, all his own clothes pretty soon. Um, but Essentially, it's sponsorship that comes off the back of it. But then we just want to tell our story in the right way. So when we put our head down on the pillow at night time, like we're not feeling shit, you know. I mean, we're not feeling guilty. Like we're like, fuck, we're making a difference in a positive way. We're never going to be Channel Nine. Never going to be Fox Sports. We'll never make that type of money. But um, we we can make we can build a decent business model off the back of doing the right thing. And I feel like that's important to me. Mate, well, like fuck, I see so many like younger than us walking around in YKR, YKTR kit or, mm. you know, little. he's all got these little sayings like doozy or let's go or now it's like shit, baby. <laughs> let's go. So like that's – I reckon he's an influence in a massive like new wave of generation of like sports fans, like mainly rugby league at the moment. But mm. I, don't, I can't wait to see what you do there. I, I think so awesome. too. I think I think Justin uh, Scope will come alive when American sports comes back because mm. he loves it, bro. He loves it. And like his guy he's living with now, Jordan, he, like he's a great personality, good little plus one. He's a bit of a giggle, bit of a fuck around, but he actually knows what he's talking about with sports as well. So those are the types of things that we actually want to build. So um, yeah, it's – like, like I said, we, we put out so much content so we can influence like vocabulary, we can influence like wardrobes because there's so much fucking content out and it's done in the right way. So essentially I want to build a brand, say like 20 years from now where like kids go, oh, I remember my dad when he was rocking. Like people taking like their first birthday photos in YKTR kit, bro, that's important to me. And because they're like, oh, here's a photo of you and a baby. Oh, what's that t-shirt? It's a YKTR t-shirt. Um, people having kids and their first photo of their kid is like them wearing – and I'll send those types of photos to me. Uh, people sending videos of um, unwrapping a present and, and it's got a YKTR hoodie and she starts crying like, fuck. You know what I mean? So like I said before, like I used to use YKTR in the clothes to fucking not work a nine to five and then I wanted to do it to create content because I enjoyed doing that shit and build a business and hang out with my friends and get to travel. And then the last one is like, fuck, how can I inspire people with this fucking hoodie? And yeah, that's that's where I'm at right now. The old vintage kit, YKTR, yeah, in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. But like, save you, a couple. We, like, you look at a lot of businesses and they go through cycles, like Subies, you know, mm. like they would go, they, they were the big time. And I feel like that would have been us if we were younger. Like, if I had YKTR when I was 21, it'd be fucking party every weekend. Yeah. But <laughs> like, this office would be like a club, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sort of glad I got a little bit older, but they're actually gone through a few different life cycles and they're still around now, but they, they don't have the original owners, they don't have the identity that they used to have. They were just two party boys, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Good, that, but like they were killing it they were killing it and it just didn't have that like structure behind it so uh, we're at that point now like we've grown so much and it's been, been off the back of marketing and sales but our back end is a, a, actually isn't as clean as it should be like we're paying all our taxes and that stuff got cleared up pretty quickly but like operationally like we should be operating a lot better we should be planning out a year from now and that's all the stuff I'm learning now I feel you there <laughs> <laughs> but um What's the other businesses you got going? You seem uh, like a couple? Yeah, so I've just invested into a vintage tea company, not so much for the sake of trying to make a fuckload of money off the back of it, more so because I believe in the founder. He works for YK oh, yeah, Town Sports, Jackson. I um, just want to help him out. We just want to get into a point where that can pay him, then he can work for YKTR Sports a bit more. Once YKTR Sports makes a bit more money, we can start paying him a wage now. So um, he's worked hard for me for a year for nothing, like for free clothes. So it's more so like fuck. 
Thanks. How'd you find them boys? No, they found me. They both found me. So Lukey used to send me content all the time. Never met him. Every day he sent me content. Funny stuff, funny stuff. I was like, who, like, who was this kid? Come in, had a meeting. And he kind of reverse engineered me. Um, he knew I was into like Gary V. Um, he'd always, mind fuck Jay. Yeah, mind, bro. Yeah, he <laughs> said, yeah, pretty much, bro. He said it too. He's like, he goes, oh, I just knew how to, how I'd get in front of you, and this is how I done it. Like it's unreal. Yeah, and like I don't like. I was like, yeah, fuck, that's mad because <laughs> uh, people get cut if there's something like that happen. But he figured. Do you me ever out. think he's doing it now? Nah, <laughs> doing little sneakies. Nah, <laughs> but he figured me out, and like because he knew I was a Gary V guy, and Gary V says like. Do something for someone for free and then get in front of him. And it's cliche that model. Jackson, very similar. He goes, oh, if you need any written stuff, let me do it for you. Um, both work their asses off for free. And obviously Luke gets paid from us now. Um, I think it's not too far till Jackson get paid from, from us as well. So, yeah. That's what, that's what you essentially done with YKTR. Like put all your content out free, free, free. Then it comes for a sale. We don't really have to ask. People just yeah. put that's, their hand because they want to support you. Mm. And like, um, like, our content will always be free. Like I'm never going to charge people for our content. That online course stuff's a little bit different because um, it's like a gym membership. If you give away a free gym membership, how many people are actually going to use it? Mm-hmm. They'll come at the start and they, they don't value it so much because they're not spending their hard-earned money on it. So there's always going to be that 1% to 2% of information I'll give to my um, people that are paying for this. But in terms of YKTR, like I'll give a fuckload of content away as much as we can. YKTR Sports is going to be exactly the same way. We'll never charge anyone for that type of content. But um, if you do want to support us, that's great. But if you don't, fuck, that's great as well. If we're making content and you come home and you're like, fuck i've just had the worst day and your vlog gave me a giggle like that's a win bro that's a win because that's brand and people don't understand the difference between branding and sales they always want the sale they always want the sale um but if you do stuff when you're chasing the sale all the time well fuck your business because it won't last long uh the other business you said one more uh dice digital dice digital just digital agency i'm sure you've been approached by a few of them in your time like i'll oh, let us take over your email and your spam ads. emails plenty of them come yeah. through <laughs> so you know, we're gonna be those guys we're gonna be those guys and it's not the fact of like what i found and when i talk to marketing people when they've come through marketing uh platforms back in the day they were so good at building other people's brands they always go oh why don't i just build my own brand and so we're going the other way out. We've already built our brands up and my business partner's built a very successful couple of businesses as well. And he's smarter than me. And that's the reason I'm going into business with him because he's smarter than me and he's the complete opposite to me. I can market, I can brand, I can sell, I can fucking talk pretty on, on a podcast. I'm comfortable in front of a camera. He's not. He loves numbers. He loves breaking down. He's like, oh, fuck, you, if your margin's not there, we need to be changing this and all that sort of stuff. Where I love looking at that stuff, but I don't want to be figuring that shit out. So he's a perfect balance for me in, in, in that sort of terms. But um, I feel like we can help a lot of businesses. So there's that. So there's a strategy of like, you want to start a business or you're not making, if you're making under a million dollars, I think the blueprint can help you out. Um, but if you're over that point where you're making sort of one to sort of three million, um, that's a little little pocket of, of the businesses that we want to target because I think we can grow that business quite quick but then we want to grow them to a point where you get an in-house marketer like everyone wants their own in-house marketer so um, it's I've never really done client services but my business partner has so it's going to be a different element to it as well um, very Gary V like Vayner Media so that's essentially what we want to do because um, buy the jets no nah, nah. nah. New Zealand Warriors or? Knights Knights, Knights? <laughs> nah. oh, that's alright you're a Knights fan yeah hey? love them love them going alright yeah um, yeah but so I got those on and then I've had a few like you get to a point where you make your own content, you self-brand, you do it in the right way, you get opportunities come to you. And sort of at that point now, like I used to say yes to everything. I was like, yeah, let me do that, let me do that. But How many of, coffees you go for back nah, in the back? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. And a lot of them were like, <laughs> and for people who don't know this context, it's more so like, hey bro, can I come like pick your brain? And like, I was trying to be a good guy. I was saying yes to everyone. And like, I'd sit there, have a coffee or someone, they're like, yeah, I'm looking to start a clothing brand. Um, like, here's the first design. It pretty much looks the same as ours, but I like, just changed the letters around. And it's like, what's your thoughts? I'm like, fuck, I've like wasted an hour of my time to come have this type of conversation. So, yeah, I don't, I don't take coffees anymore. No coffees? No. Just potties. <laughs> um, got a few questions for you. So, biggest lesson you learnt so far in terms of business? Oh, fuck, how long? Biggest one. Um... So the biggest lesson I've learned is a triangle in business that you've got to understand. So it's like marketing and branding. Um, the other one is operations and the other one's finance. And if they're not, like, if you don't have all those things sorted, it fucks up your triangle. And so when we first started, I was very good at marketing and branding, but I had never paid a tax or anything. So that fucked up my triangle, you know what I mean? And my operations was bad. I was spending all my time on um, on posting and stuff. I'd, 
I'd neglect all the other things as well. So once I got rid of that, it cleared up a lot more of my time. So understanding that triangle has been super important. Probably the best lesson that I try to explain to other people now is um, there's two types of business owners. There's people that own a business and there's people that work for themselves. And you got to understand what the difference is. If your business, if you have to be at work for your business to make money, you're just self-employed. And that's the difference. And um, comes off the back of like, like I don't have to be at YKTR for us to make money. I can schedule content for two, three weeks. I can have all my back end work and I've got all these um, systems in place, but I go fuck off to Bali if I want. So that, that we want to try and build businesses where you don't actually have to be there all the time. I want to be here, but that's where those are the types of businesses I try and get into now. All right. Next one is an online business, the way to go. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying this because I've got done one, but like I know, I know plenty of businesses through this COVID time and I talked to a lot of successful people as well. They lost a fuckload of money and because they're in that brick and mortar space. If you're hospitality, you have to do that. If you're a gym, you have to do that. But you have to have an online component as well. Is it online courses for you guys? Is it um is it an e-commerce store for clothes? Is it is it like you should have multiple sources of revenue coming through, but one of them should be online. And I talked to P Nation owner, P um Pip Edwards, and she goes, That was a cool podcast. Yeah, man, cool like check, that, bro. Yeah. Cool check. And um she they're moving eighty percent online. So the world's moving online. Um, like eight out of ten Australians are brought online. Um, I think it's like a thirty-five billion dollar industry within Australia. So and it's just going up and up, and people are more comfortable buying online. Well, so, you, how did you go through COVID? We're talking just before. Yeah, COVID. we went good. Yeah. Um, scary rolling into it. I was kind of excited. It's the first time I've been tested. Like my journey in business kind of just been like that. Like fuck, that's good how you look at it like that. Like excited for a bit of a challenge. Yeah, like, let's go. Talk. Yeah. And like, cause I always heard Gary V, cause he used to always go, I oh, wait, wait till like the something hap- something's happening soon. It's been 10 years mm. since the market crash. Something's going to happen. This will weed out all the entrepreneurs. And, and like, cause I, cause he's been in my ear for the last two, three years. I've just been waiting for it. And I didn't know it was going to be COVID, but it was. And we felt COVID on a different level as well. Cause it fucked up our supply chain in China. So we went Chinese New Year. They don't work for a whole month. They so take the whole month off and like, so like, oh shit. And then that COVID happened 28th of January. So they were, they were gone for like six weeks. So there was like an eight week, no, a two to three month period where we were getting nothing made over in China. So we had to sort of like think on our feet, do a little local production and we actually grew. So it, it was good. And we were trying to, um, when we went into COVID, I was like, fuck, I want to double down on our content. I want our content to be more valuable. I want it to be more entertaining. And that, that was, that's what we focused on. We focused on content and then like sales come off the back of that. Uh, next one. This is a good one. Can't remember who sent this in, but bench cut, start, Chico, Normie, or Scope? Scope's cut. Scope. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the scope. Uh, <laughs> I've got to go, go loyal here. Um, it's a tough one, eh? I just like love it. Like, uh, this is such a broad question, name. Oh, sorry. It was on a, on a Larry. On, on a, a Larry. Oh. No, nah, I'll, I'll go my boys. I'll start, I'll start Corey, bench, Chico, and then later Scope. Be chasing Charlotte around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be spilled about that. <laughs> um, next one, another little question about dead or alive, three people at your table. Just for, yeah, to, uh, w- Gary V. Hunger. Gary V, one. Uh, Will Smith, number two. Oh, yeah, uh, why co- that? Just correlation of humour and, and smart. I feel like it's a great breakdown. If you're funny and you can um, educate as well, um, he's just got it. Like, he transcends cultures. Rock's very similar. Like, you can get an 80-year-old lady that loves a rock and a 10-year-old kid. I feel like Will Smith's that sort of guy for me. He was the guy that got me into reading. Uh, besides Michael Lark, um, he talked about – I watched this 10-minute YouTube clip about Will Smith and he was talking about how his dad raised him and – you got to focus on laying the brick perfectly every single day. And then once you look up, you've got a brick wall. And I remember watching that when I was probably about 19, 20. I was like, and then he started talking about a, about a book called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And I re- ended up reading that book and it kind of got me on my journey like that. Um, and uh, had to be a um, toss up between two guys, Naval Ravikant, who's an angel investor. Oh, yeah. Um, watches Joe Rogan thing. Very smart guy. Breaks things down very sim- like complex ideas. Sounds very simple through his mouth. Um, he's a billionaire, pretty interesting guy. Um, or I'd go MJ or Kobe, like or someone along those sort of level. Probably Kobe because he he's my guy. Kobe, yeah, Kobe shot. I ask everyone this too. So, like the best advice you could give someone to get up and just have a crack, have a go at something. Like if they're sitting there contemplating, oh, you know, this person's going to point the finger, or I don't know, I'll start next week. Like um, your best advice. Yeah, I think your biggest fear should be re- regret. 
and like your biggest fear should be not trying at all and like fuck like money you can make more money you know what i mean you can you can like who cares if you fail because i failed a couple of small businesses early but then like why ktr has become a success and then but this isn't always going to be a success as well this might fail in two three years from now and my my attention all these lessons i've learned from this is just going to go into another avenue so uh don't be scared of failing don't be scared of wasting money but be scared of not trying at all that that'll be my biggest piece of advice What's the end goal for you, Ice? Um, like, where do you want to be? What's your retirement goal? Yeah, so, like, oh, I'm starting to, I'm not motivated by money. Like, I've made, like, last month I've made probably more money than I have in a long, long time. But, like, it doesn't change the way I feel chemically. Like, I don't get excited over that. Um, but I just want to build a brand that inspires the most people um, personally and through. That That's my thing. Like, I get – I've had – Eight people saying like they've contemplated suicide. The podcast has helped me through. Like that's like essentially saved someone's life. But, but then you feel like, oh, fuck, I need to make more podcasts. Uh, <laughs> I've had hundreds and hundreds of people saying you've inspired me to start my own business. Not even clothing. It's been like builders. It's been fucking everything. Um, you've inspired me to start a podcast. You've started me to start. And like that's my measuring stick in life. Like I was like, well, fuck. Like, I don't know. Like I get a kick out of getting those. And I, uh, you can't put a monetary value on that, but it makes me feel good. It makes me excited to get up, and uh, when I lay my head at, at bed at night time, uh, yeah, I can sleep pretty well, and that's that's probably all you can ask for, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, good, yeah. a good night's sleep good and excited night's to get up. That's all I'm after. Well, that's good, eh? Like you want to you want to bounce out of bed and enjoy what you do, eh? Like you're pretty big on that. Yeah. Okay. So like, I've done six podcasts in a row, and the last question is like, how do you define success? And that's how I define it. Like, am I excited to get up, or am I or do I want to roll back over? People want people like know the difference between a Monday and a Saturday. They're excited to get up on a Saturday because they've got things to look forward to. So once you get to a point where you're doing exactly what you want to do in life, and um, and you're excited to get up. I don't know. Like it's like when you're on holiday, where you don't. Like, it doesn't feel like a Wednesday. You're like, oh fuck, I got here like two days ago. So that means I've got like five more days left. Like that's what you're like on holiday, eh? and that's what my life feels like now. Like it's. I know it's Thursday because I've got footy companion tonight. But besides that, I'd wake up and go, fuck, what day is it? Yeah, nice. Mm. Good giggle too, footy companion. I watch. Yeah. Uh, fuck, I rock up to <laughs> that blind. You were bro. blind. I think I'll be blind like four out of five of them too. So <laughs> we, we go to the pub about six thirty, have a snitty in the bear. Sometimes I start about four. Got the old bear fridge over there, bro. <laughs> so. Nice looking fridge, actually. Yeah, end of financial year sale, bro. <laughs> All right, sweet. Well, thanks for jumping. Or oh, I jumped on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, I jumped on yours, bro. <laughs> Down at YKTR. Um, yeah, man, that was really good. Really enjoyed it. People get a lot out of that. Thanks, my guy. Killing it. Appreciate it. Keep it up. Cheers.